Hello and welcome to another lab update. Now today is a pure CCS update and you may be thinking, wait a minute, there's been quite a lot of CCS updates um, lately, sort of lately. And yes, there have been, but things are progressing. Um, I think the first CCS video featured this one, or maybe an even earlier version of this one, which has got um, a power line modem from, an, from a LAN adapter. It's got a BeagleBone Linux uh, computer, and it's got literally some glue logic connecting all that um, together. So while this uh, worked, I think at quite some charges, um, it, it needs to boot up and uh, yeah, as you can see, it's quite bulky and that. And that's why Yuhi from Ingolstadt has developed a, a more embedded version of it. And that's uh, this one right here. Um, let's put it the right way around. Should I say it? All the electrons are gonna fall out. Um, yeah, so what you see here is a power line modem in this section down here with a little transformer and a QCA chip soldered directly to the board. Some filter components are missing, but they're not as crucial. And then up here we've got the STM32 with a CAN transceiver. And then also not yet populated as drivers for contactors and the lock motor. I will put in a little snippet with that running with the other board. So in the foreground here you see the connector lock. In the background here you see the um, state C uh, thing. So that should jump to over three volts when we start charging. Contact. Yeah, you can see the connector is locked now and we have state C turned on. Now I will uh, just cancel the EVSE, and then after some time out, it should all be reverted. Um, so yeah, this one's got 256k of flash, so it's almost the one we're using for the inverter, just a slightly larger variant. It's got more RAM and more flash, because CCS is so convoluted. And then it talks to the QCA chip via SPI, and the um, QCA chip talks to the power line modem inside the EVSE and the CAN chip talks to the well to the car, to the BMS or VCU or whoever tells it yeah which voltage we want to charge to, which current we want to charge at, what the state of charge is and all that. So it's essentially an adapter, a bridge from CAN to power line. And you may be wondering uh, are you always going to the rapid chargers to test your implementation? No. I've got a, basically a rapid charger on the table here, consisting of a power line modem um, that gets its data from my PC over Yuhi's Pi PLC scripts. And then we basically got the CP cable here. And we can do basic tests. So today we are going to go for a little drive and test this construction at various chargers. Stay tuned. We start out here at the Complejo charger, which is the one closest to my house, and it serves kind of as a reference test. It's a pretty easy charger to get to work. So let's uh, look at the setup first. So we've got our STM32-based um, CCS controller in here, and it talks um, CAN on the other side, on this 3D printed to demo plug. And um, just as there's no misunderstanding, this can talk any can that you want it to. Uh, I've just configured it to talk to demo. In the front here, we see our CCS inlet, and then the, the power ca cables go straight through uh, with no relays or something in between. Good, we start out by um, plugging in the to demo. And you can see on the screen here that now the car has already communicated some uh, limits. So state of charge is at 33%. Uh, battery voltage is uh, 345. That's important for pre-charge. And our target voltage is some superficial 410 volts. And once we start charging, we will see charge current also jumping to the maximum that this charger can deliver, which is, I think, 66 amps. 
Right, let's authenticate. Dive in. And I'll just pull up the spot values here. So you can see what's happening. Cable check, pre-charge, yes. And EVC ramping is only ramping up the current, as you can see here. Yeah, and there we've reached uh, the maximum of 65 amps, and it's uh, charging away. Let's take a look at the charger screen here. Yeah, so 33% as displayed before. And we're charging at 23.5 kilowatts. Good, we've arrived at a Tesla supercharger and before we get out and start charging, we've got to limit our maximum amps to say 70. Because I don't want to yank 180 amps um, via this Anderson connector. Right, let's get out. Start charging. Whoa! Using the Tesla app. And we are on 7A. Cable check. Pre charge. Should demo contact us engaged? Let's just make sure we don't. Yeah, stops at the 70 amps I've configured. And here we are, charging at a Tesla supercharger. You can see on the app our state of charge is correctly transmitted and we're charging at the limited 24 kilowatts. Goody, uh, I think there's just one little flaw. I will uh, stop charging now. Um, I guess the Tesla charger has signaled it wants to stop, but we haven't, we don't detect this yet. So what we're going to have to do is, um, yeah, we still instead current demand. So current has dropped to zero and we just slowly retract the connector. This could be enough. until our controller there times out. No, I don't think that was enough. A little more. All right, now it went into error state and now we can safely unplug. And next up, I believe, is an FSEC, is it? No, no, it's another ABB. It's probably not gonna work. Let's try anyway. At least we see the phases go through, cable check. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't plugged in the Chidemo. <laughs> okay, now supposedly my card is invalid. And something new every time.
Okay, we are getting, what? Three kilowatts, 24 kilowatts, okay. Yeah. Thomas, you may be wondering why just 23 kilowatts. Uh, that's because I've limited current to 66 amps because the Chidemo adapter is just not up for higher currents. That's why. Right, we are back from our little drive and, um, well, unfortunately again, the Ionity stalls were all taken. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's, what's up there. So I've been there in the evening, I've been there at noon, always taken. Well, I guess it's too busy around here. All chargers are taken, one is broken, and new cars are arriving like every minute. Um, let's just assume they work. But I will definitely go back there later and um, check. And I also want to fix the bug um, that the Tesla charger doesn't stop or doesn't really disconnect upon stopping in the app. Yeah, so still some minor things to improve, but overall, this is. Um, growing up to be quite a solution and uh, I think it will show up in the shop soon. I think that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Bye!